Hey, what's up, everybody? This is going to be a web challenge from the Down Under CTF. Just before we jump into things here, I want you all to know I do have a blog if you want to follow along where I have a visual workflow if you want to see things visually at a high level because I'm a visual person. I have a summary and then I try and break it down in a technical summary and provide references for you before I get into the bits and pieces of things. All right, let's jump over and have a look at our challenge. This is going to be CO2 from the web category. Let's talk at a high level in 20 seconds how to solve this challenge. You enumerate the web application, you create an account and login, you burp the feedback form, enumerate the request, learn about the JSON data being passed, you do some source analysis on utilities.python, routes.python, then you identify a Python pollution vulnerability via the merge process, you craft a payload, you send that payload, and you get the flag. Okay, now let's look at the challenges. Let's see. Uh... Description. So it reads, a group of students who don't like to do things the conventional way decided to come up with a cybersecurity blog post. You've been hired to perform an in-depth white box test on their application. Let's go ahead and take a look at their application. All right, here's the web application. There's not a lot going on. So we're going to go ahead and register and then log in. So we can see we really have two options here on the website. There's two things users can interact with. Initially, one, we can create a blog post. Two, we can click the feedback form and provide some content that will be safely stored forever. Other than that, there's not a lot else to enumerate on this web application. I'll quickly show you what it looks like when you burp the feedback request, and then we'll pivot and do some source code analysis to find the vulnerability. Here we have it. This is what you see if you burp the feedback form request, and you're going to see this little JSON body here where it's outlining the specific attributes of this, this feedback form object. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the source code. This is the routes file. And the first thing, there's three important things on in the routes file. The first one is right here, the flag, OS get environment flag. So the flag is actually an environment variable. Now the second important thing is right here. And this is going to be the tack get flag request. And this endpoint will actually check and if flag is equal to true, which is a, now a global variable, which we've seen above defined in the as an environment variable, then it will actually return um, the flag. And if it's not true, if the flag environment variable is not true, it will return nope. Now, the third thing we want to look at in this routes file is just above here in the save feedback endpoint. And this is where we see our object, the save feedback object uh, in relation to the form you're filling up. What's really important is there's a comment here saying we want to dynamically grab data and save attributes. We can merge it and it should create attributes for the object. So this is actually hinting at the vulnerability of a Python pollution vulnerability because it's talking about creating objects from for the object dynamically, like at runtime while things are running. And you can see down here, there's this merge process that says merge data feedback. Now let's go ahead and do some analysis of the utilities Python file. Okay, here in the utilities file, we can see the merge function and we know the merge function is calling on data and feedback. So here it's doing source and destination. So source is the data, which is that JSON data payload. And the destination is the feedback object. And we're going to write into that. And if we look through here, we can see that there's a dictionary that's created and um, the the program goes through recursively and looks at every attribute and make sure if it's not there, then it actually updates and appends what we're looking for. Now, in case you're not familiar with a Python prototype, blah, a Python uh, prototype pollution, because to be honest, I'm, I'm not the most familiar with web challenges. A quick analogy is imagine a hotel with a digital registry system where guests can enter their details when they check in. It's self check in. The hotel has uh, a default template for each user and it has things on it like um, guest name, room number, where you're from, how many times you stayed, and uh, special requests. Maybe you like warm towels or um, I don't know, uh, some freshly delivered food when you arrive. But, anyways, the system automatically merges these details into the guest profile. So it's like a template and you, and it's merging 
the two together. And we're gonna merge these two templates together and pass some malicious commands. Now let's talk about building this payload. So here we have our initial request and we're going to add onto this. The first thing we wanna add is the class. Why do we wanna call the class here? Because we wanna access the class of object, the feedback object, because this is going to let us manipulate the feedback class. All right, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to add, obviously the initializer method. With the initializer method here added for a class, this is gonna let us move to the next stage where we're now going to call globals. And globals lets us access global variables because we know the flag is a global variable from how it was defined when we were looking at the routes file earlier. So let's add that. All right, so we have the class, the initializer, the globals. Now the last thing we have to add is our attribute. That's going to be the flag true. Let's tack that. Now this is our payload fully assembled. So we're gonna go ahead now, we're going to forward this request, and now we're going to browse over to the get flag endpoint and check out what we get. Boom, there it is.